Record of Ragnarok, the latest Netflix anime. The anime is already banned in India. The manga has some One Punch Man-like art. So what could go wrong? Is it worth the hype? Stay tuned, I may save you four hours. So go ahead and smash that like, just like Netflix smashed this anime. But really, hit that like to make the YouTube gods happy. And a thank you to today's awesome sponsor, Keeps. Over 65% of guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time that they're 35. That is crazy. You might have heard hair loss in the past being blamed on your mother, getting too much sunshine, visiting the hub too much, but Keeps wants you to know that these things have been disproven. You all know that family member or best bud who's dealing with hair loss. It actually happened to one of my buddies during this lockdown period. And the good news is that you don't have to wait for it to happen to you. Keeps helps you stop hair loss before it's too late. They give you access to their scientific and affordable approach to treatments that are up to 90% effective at reducing and stopping further hair loss. Keeps actually offers the genetic versions of the two FDA approved hair loss products. So you're in good hands. Right now, Keeps is giving all my awesome, beautiful viewers 50% off your order. One of the best things I love about this is that you can order online without any hassle, which means avoiding that awkward setup and visit to your doctor for the prescription. So if you're ready to get proactive and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash foxanatomy, or just click that link down in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Anyways, the record of Ragnarok anime. In case you're just hearing about this, the actual story intro is pretty interesting. You got a bunch of gods and divine beings talking smack about humans. But are they wrong? They're saying we're wasteful, there's too much plastic, so we must go extinct. But instead of hitting us again with another asteroid, how about testing humanity? So here's a proposition, make Ragnarok happen. And I know what you're picturing, but throw that out the window. For this anime, it's actually gonna be a battle between the gods and humans. Did someone say a tournament arc? 13 gods versus 13 humans. Us meatbags only need to win seven times. Sounds extremely fair. Technically, these humans do get a buff from the Valkyries. Thank you. Which I still think we could have used a stronger enhancement. Give us one of those starter level Sekai abilities. And I know what you're thinking. The whole premise of this anime actually sounds very familiar to a recent anime. God of High School. Sure, this one has a little bit different flavor with the human versus gods, getting to choose fighters throughout history. You might actually be getting a slight drifter's vibe. From the gods, you have a mixed bag. You have people like Odin, Thor, Loki, Zeus, Ares, Hermes, Aphrodite, and even Shiva. But anyway, let's just jump straight into the crap fest, where this anime completely fails. Oh yeah, so I'm talking about what they're calling fights, battles, right. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it, these do have a slideshow feel to them. It's made worse by the fact that they're not even subtle about it. These so-called fights, action scenes are pretty slowed down. It actually may remind you what you started seeing in later Food Wars seasons. On the other hand, that style worked for this non-fighting anime. I mean, just look at this. The whole selling point is the tournament, the fights. That's what Netflix was heavily promoting. But get this, the majority of your action scenes are actually still images, camera shaking, spamming the speed up lines everywhere. I mean, this thing is really just hot garbage, just awful and horrendous. And don't get me wrong, I could forgive some of this stuff here and there, but it's not like they're saving animation for these bigger complex moves or this climax. It is consistently stills. And get this, I'm not even joking, I fell asleep not once, but twice during this. The one interesting part of the conversation I've seen is people comparing this to One Punch Man Season 2. Is this as bad as that? And don't get me wrong, One Punch Man Season 2 was a step down from the first season. But at least that actually had actual animation, which further got improved on the Blu-ray. The limited animation here, that's mostly done through stills, it really reminds me of anime that airs early here in Japan aimed at little kids. I'm really just left scratching my head, because honestly, the manga had better animation. I do feel that the pseudo actually got over ambitious. For the two fighters, Thor and the other dude, the designs are far too complex. Character models were much too detailed for them. They couldn't actually animate them with whatever resources they didn't have. On the flip side, pay attention to the second and third fight. For the human and god characters, they are far less complex, which really just means much easier to actually draw, and hence make them move. And yes, I know I'm reaching for scraps to give this some type of positive feedback, but seriously, let me know, from the trailer, did you actually expect to get this? I mean, talk about false advertising. Getting to the next major issue, the pacing. In case you haven't seen this yet, just know this is only 12 episodes. Out of the 13 fights I mentioned, they're only gonna get to three of them in the anime so far. From the three they actually highlight, they are terribly slow. Just to get an idea, they are averaging four episodes per fight. 
the majority of that time in the actual episodes isn't even them actually fighting. You get more from the characters being introduced, reactions from the crowd, the fighters talking, or even better, good chunks spent on the backstory through flashbacks. When you're watching this, you really just wish they get back to the actual damn fight. And then you realize you made a horrible mistake wishing that. So either you get the majority of time spent in this non-fight stuff, or in the actual watered-down action scene. After wasting my time binging the anime, I actually did read the manga just to see which was the problem, was it the anime or the manga? Could it be that the actual studio was handicapped by the source material? You heard about this only covering three fights. They actually get to the introduction to the fourth fight. Let me just tell you, the next fight is actually the longest fight yet. You got Hercules versus Jack the Ripper. This is like twice as long as anything that came before it. Yeah, they take their sweet time. Let me actually ask you this. In terms of animation, have we really just gotten spoiled recently? Obviously, the gold standard for anything right now would be Ufotobo, something like Demon Slayer or the Fate anime. But recently, you also have Jujutsu Kaisen and My Hero Academia. Hell, I don't even think you need to look at top anime. Check out Vivi from this season with Studio Goat. Unfortunately, in terms of action animation, this didn't even meet the bare minimum. The studio behind this is Grafenica, and we should have known their track record is not good. Over the past few years, they really just helped other studio with their anime productions, which really just means they haven't done much solo anime. Their last huge anime project is actually Hello World. Some of you may recall this making it into my worst anime list of that year. Go figure. This really just means the studio that doesn't do that many standalone anime projects, huge red flag right there. Some of their best work in anime is actually them involved in Helsing Ultimate. Unfortunately, that was like a decade ago. The funny part about this is that I actually have more positive things to say than negative. First off, while well, they really choked on the matches, practically all of the voice actors brought their A-game. By far, one of my favorites includes the main Valkyrie girl. You definitely know her as Sheenan from SAO. But seriously, this is an all-star cast. For Thor, you got Lancer's voice actor, Shiva's Ban from Seven Deadly Sins, Poseidon is Griffith or Suzaku, Loki is Mr. Kirito himself, Hermes is Archer, Greed, and Berkali. Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, is Chi from Chobits. From the human side, you have Lu Bu, Gilgamesh, Kojiro is Hit slash Bang slash Kenny. Actually, look deeper into who's behind this, the director. The guys worked on Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood and recently Grand Bill. And I really just bring him up to highlight that this video is not a smack on his ass. Unfortunately, it's very likely this whole production was restricted heavily by the studio lacking resources. I'm not going to say the opening is the best thing ever, but I actually liked it. Who knows, there might have been more animation here than in the actual fights. Animation aside, I actually liked the quick background given for the fighters. Although I do wish they were a little bit quicker with those we're familiar with. You know, like people like Thor. On the flip side, you had characters like Lu Bu. And don't lie, you had no idea who this guy was before this. Another standout for the anime is the soundtrack was really on point. You may even say absolutely divine. Notably, the composer for this has worked on Fairy Tale, Naruto, Lock Horizon, some of the Fate spin-offs, and get this, this season's Zomaland Saga. Surprise, surprise. Forget about the fights, I actually do have to give props to the introduction to the fighters. It really got your blood pumping. So much hype, so much build-up. Unfortunately, by far the highlight of the entire match. As a positive too, bringing up the manga, at least content-wise, page by page, there was very little the anime actually chopped out. For more major things, besides the manga looking much richer in detail, it is gorier, there is more blood, more carnage, there is more sexy time stuff. You had other stuff like Eve almost getting hugged too hard toned down for the anime. So let me ask you, what do you think they could have done to make this anime better? I think the obvious starting place is really just to get a better studio. Which studio could have done a better job? Naturally, Demon Slayer and Fate fans have been spoiled by Goat Ufotable. And really, nowadays, there are almost always a cliche go-to studio. But seriously, they're unrealistic. So how about MAPPA? Watching this anime, really just with the whole premise, I was dreaming of Jujutsu level fights. Bone Studio or Madhouse also come to mind. A smaller but notable studio also includes Silverlink, although it seems like they're really just becoming the Isekai anime studio. Another easy fix might have just really been the pacing. This anime really just shows that more episodes does not equal better. They could have tried to fit another 4 episodes worth of content into the current 12 episodes, meaning 4 fights total, or stretch out 3 fights into 12 episodes, which is what they went with. Sucks for them, it really just seems like they were in this lose-lose situation. With that in mind, they could have condensed this to 11 or 10 episodes. If you do watch this on Netflix, use and abuse that speed up button. 
So let me actually just speak some facts. It's starting to seem that this anime production might have been doomed from the start. Unfortunately, this battle anime got given to this bottom tier studio, which didn't have the resources to actually pull off the fights. Oh, and out of those 13 fights, you're only gonna see three of them. Hey, you're like 25% done for the story. Speaking of which, in the manga, there are only two fights ahead. They're gonna need another two or three seasons to even finish this. Don't be surprised if those seasons never come. Naturally living in Japan, I've been wondering, what is Japan's reception of this? Look at what my Japanese buddy said about this anime. He couldn't believe this was actually a Japanese produced anime. That'll tell you something. Unlike the other recent Netflix original Yusuke, which they were really pushing, I haven't seen any notable promo campaigns here in Japan. The only little bit of something is this collab shop that opened up nearby. I might actually check that out tomorrow. But anyway, getting into my overall rating, and definitely let me know what you thought. Overall, pretty meh. Really, more waste of potential with another Netflix anime. I almost consider this a waste of time. Watch, it's gonna be forgettable by the end of this year. By the end of this season, it'll be on some anime people's worst of anime list. Without a doubt, another smudge for Netflix anime. Hell, I think Yusuke might have been better. My recommendation for you is either just skip wasting 4 hours on this, don't worry I did it for you, or if you're still curious, check out the first episode and maybe speed it up, and if you do like it, switch over to the manga. Instead of this, I would actually recommend watching other underwatched underrated anime like Vivi going on right now. Damn you Funimation Jail! On a brighter note, I actually do have to give thanks to the anime for introducing me to the story. I actually like the manga enough to continue with it. Hopefully I'll forget about it, so I have a few chapters to read later on. The art style actually reminds me of the One Punch Man manga. Whether it's actually on the same level, I'll leave that up to you to decide. If it tells you anything, reading the manga I actually got chills seeing what I already had seen poorly done in the anime. I was almost tearing up in the second match. Even in the third match, which I felt was kinda meh, I was on the edge of my seat reading it. And by the off chance someone on Netflix is listening, if you do want to dive into anime so badly, why not fun popular past anime that haven't gotten another sequel? Something like Konosuba, No Game No Life, Spice and Wolf. How about Claymore? Although that one needs a reboot. Hey Mappa, I know you'll take anything. Cause right now the reputation for Netflix anime could be better. Doing something like this would instantly win over most anime people. But anyway, comment below, did you have some same issues with this anime? Or perhaps you think I'm crazy and you actually loved it? Or are you just checking out the manga instead? Don't forget to like and subscribe, new anime videos every Friday. Check out much better anime coming out for summer anime season, and I'll see you guys later.